welcome back to the channel guys today i'll be bringing you some performance and gameplay from the unreal engine 5 um, which has recently been released you can get access to this via the um, epic game launcher on pc there you can download the unreal engine 5 and also download the sample project which is city sample and this is taken from the matrix awakens demo which was previously released on the xbox series sx and playstation 5 and um, I actually ran some tests on the PlayStation 5 and uh, it, it looked amazing. I was really blown away by it. But now I have the opportunity to use my PC and my RTX 3090 Ti and see how it performs. Now, um, S, I think it's SK Hijinx, someone, a uh, user that uh, I speak to on in YouTube and on Twitter was kind enough to provide me a link to a uh, basically a compiled version of the demo so it's not this isn't running out of the editor this time so it's going to be a lot more smoother and um, more closer to what a demo would actually represent so shout out to um, HK Hynix or SK Hynix Hijink sorry should I say <laughs> thanks for hooking me up so um, one thing this demo is is something that really relies on caching so the first time you run this it will be quite choppy so First time you play this, just run around for about 10 minutes and then it will smoothen things out the next time you play. So I've done that myself and as you can see performance is not so choppy. Now what I will say is um, the city is just absolutely huge and it's a, an amazing achievement the way they've been able to scale the city. It's no smoke or mirrors, it really is a, a full city that you can explore and I'll float above a little bit later and show you some drone footage just to show you how well done it is. If you run over these people, they just disappear, so it's okay. So performance, when you're at high speeds, you're gonna be like in the low 40s, um, but you can see upwards of 55 to 60 frames per second at times. Um, unfortunately, the demo doesn't seem to utilize the GPU at 100% load, so there is performance left on the table, whether that's an optimization thing, a CPU bottleneck, which I very much doubt because this demo is demanding and it's at 4K as well, so I very much doubt it's a CPU bottleneck, it's more of an engine thing. But there's certainly performance left on the table here. Slight traffic accident there, but they've actually Done a damage model for the cars as well, which is nice to see. And this engine is utilizing pretty much all the cores and threads of the Ryzen 9 5950X, which is nice to see. So that's a good move for the engine going forward. So we shouldn't be playing these games in the future that are only using like four cores, and you've got your nice, powerful multi core CPU just basically going to waste. So that's a nice thing to see as well. I'm just going to get out now. There's one thing that really impresses me. It's just the scale of the buildings. So when you're walking around and then you look up, you realize how tall everything is and it really does feel accurate. Very, very well represented. And the mix of body types, um, NPC faces, and um, ethnicities, races, genders, everything is really, really good. So you don't feel like you're walking past copy paste people and the difference in clothing so imagine if they made cyberpunk 2077 with this it would have been a, a different game it would have been a completely different game so i very much support cd project red's decision to go with the unreal engine 5 for their next game i heard tomb raider is going to go with unreal engine 5 for the next game as well so um it's looking good. I reckon we're going to get a, a lot more games um, in the future that we were on previous engines are going to move over to Unreal Engine 5 just because of the capabilities. And look how much smoother it's running now than when I was running it in the, in the renderer. So well, I think my 6900 XT actually does a better job with this demo. It gets closer to 60 frames most of the time. But AMD did re release a driver to support this this demo so maybe they're more optimized than nvidia who knows but yeah you're not going to be losing any performance if you've got a 6900 xt or 6800 xt 
you'd be pretty much be getting the same performance as me, even though I'm using like a an overclocked RTX 3090 Ti. So um, I think both AMD and Nvidia are going to perform well in this engine. So I'm going to go into drone mode now, and uh, you guys can have a look on the top of some of these buildings, and you can see that they've really done a lot of work. So if you go to the top of these buildings, you'll see um, like. AC units, you'll see like airflow, ventilation, um, plumbing, everything. Everything you'd expect to see at the top of a, a building, it's there. So it's not like they're hiding it from sight because you're not looking at it. It is actually there. So it's really, really impressive. And just look at the scale of, of the game. This is like something... You could, they would have probably dreamed of maybe five, ten years ago. Now they've actually got an engine that can actually do this in real time. And it's not like all being baked or pre-rendered or anything like that. This is all fully interactive as well. I mean, this is just amazing. I'm not a uh, developer or anything like that. But even for someone who just plays games, this is like really, really impressive. So if you're a developer, you're probably thinking about everything you could do with this and what you probably couldn't do before, what it would have took to do something like this or even mimic it in some way. And um, yeah, I think the future's bright for, for games 2023 and above. And hopefully there'll be similar engines with the similar capabilities. Because you don't want Unreal having a monopoly on things. It's never a good thing. Because it always has its limitations. Again, the caching thing makes the, your first experience pretty bad, but once you've done all the caching, it does run pretty smooth. Man, but look at the scale of this. It's just ridiculous. And the light model is amazing as well. Everything around here is surrounded by high buildings, so there's no real direct light getting through to the to the, the ground floor. But everything above is getting baked in um, or drenched in sunlight. So I don't know if this is using ray tracing or anything, but whatever model they're using, it, it works really, really well. I'm going to go back to... Uh, the character now and um, drive around a little bit more maybe I should try and um, interact with some more NPCs just go and look at their faces because another thing that they really highlighted in this Unreal Engine is the meta human thing so if you look at this gentleman here in the suit I'm gonna run down the street and see if there's anyone else that looks anything remotely close to him but yeah this is seriously impressive stuff I think I'll have to give the nod to the AMD 6900 XT on this one I do believe it performs better than Nvidia so um, people that have got ready on 6000 series cards um, you guys are gonna be in good stead for um, Unreal Engine 5 games so I remember Unreal Engine was always a bad thing or not, it never used to run as good on AMD, but I don't think that's going to be an issue with Unreal Engine 5. So you got this gentleman here, different body type, different suit. It's good to see. Cyberpunk could be taking some notes here. Okay, so we got this lady here, completely different body type, still wearing a suit though. But I've seen at least five different suits so far. Let's have a look at this gentleman here. Different suit, different look, different stance, different everything. So, you know, they've got a huge variety when it comes to the meta human. And um, I think we're not going to be walking down the street and seeing three or four people with the same hairstyle and the same clothes in the space of a minute, which is, which is a welcome sight. But yeah, this is a very, very seriously impressive stuff. And um, it is really great work by the Unreal Engine team. And just allowing us to actually experience this early on, I've probably still got some stuff to work on, is nice of them as well. I'm going to try driving at high speed now. those who watch my previous video when I was driving at high speed it would really tank FPS and it would stutter a lot but because I've took the time to cash out the uh, demo um, this shouldn't happen anymore in theory so let's try and get up to a high speed 
and uh, see what kind of uh, what kind of performance we get. Seems to be traffic everywhere. So there's a bit of a stutter there, but still few and far in between than it was before. We don't have a little one there as well, holding around 45 frames per second. Try and get up to 100 miles per hour now. Still performing pretty smooth. So seeing the faster you're going, it does it does really tank performance a bit. So I was down into the 40s there. Crashed the car now. Let's go and have a look at the water. But this is uh, kind of the edge of town here. Let's park up. One thing I don't like is how blurry the, the uh, tyres look when it's in motion, but when they're static and they're standing still, they look okay. Let's have a look at the water now. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.